Welcome to Guys and Bats. Thursday, the third day of January. Andrew Avery here with Johnny Oddshark. Happy New Year to all of you watching from home. Happy New Year to those of you watching secretly at work. Johnny, how was the holidays? Wonderful, thank you. You? It was pretty good. Okay. Yeah, good holidays. Right. Good. Standard, some couple days with the fam. A lot good. of eating. Yes. A lot of drinking. Yes. Par for the course. What did you eat most of? Uh... Chocolates. Yes, me too. Non-stop, basically. Yeah, me too. You know, I have a box yeah. like on the coffee table, and yeah, you get nervous when it's taken <laughs> away, don't you? <laughs> I know the feeling. I kind of do. Yeah. Large show for you all today. Of course, we've got NFL Wild Card Weekend. We've got Jill Gallant with NBA Quick Picks from tonight's uh, NBA board. We got our boy at Spread Investor uh, to talk NFL and uh, national championship game. But Johnny. Speaking of that national championship game, that's where I want to start. Okay. We've got Clemson and Alabama. We've got Nick Saban and Dabo Swinney. Round four? Yes. Two back-to-back -back national championship games and then a semifinal meeting last year, uh, which, of course, Bama won 24-6. Clemson beat Bama in 2017. Bama won in 2016. This opened Bama minus six and a half. It's now five and a half. Clemson, though, pretty hot bet entering this one. Uh, covered seven of its last nine, including that 30 to three beatdown of Notre Dame in the semis. How much did that surprise you? And was it Clemson's performance or was it Notre Dame's? It surprised me a little bit. I thought Notre Dame would be better. And I think this is more Clemson. I think their, their defense is just so good. Mm -hmm. So good at shutting down. Really good Notre Dame offense. And QB and Ian Book just could not get anything going. They got some yards going a little bit. But just couldn't score. And uh, I think Alabama's in tough here as well. I think this line is moving the right way. And... Bama's defense is the concern for me here. They've allowed at least 21 points in each of their last three games. Yeah. And they seem to be playing their worst football at exactly the wrong time. Whereas Clemson's just been incredible defensively. Good offensively too, but incredible yeah. defensively. Nine of their last ten opponents have, have been held to 16 points or fewer. So I give them the edge here uh, that way. Alabama has to find a way to slow the run, I think. They, yep. They've got to come up big there on offense. But this just feels like too many points for a game for two pretty evenly matched teams. Freshman quarterback doesn't worry about you in such a big, big spot. It worries me a little bit. So if you like Alabama, you may want to consider first half. That does. That is the one kind of worry here for me with Clemson is that a rookie, true freshman QB in this huge spotlight. But he did very well in the first game. I don't worry as much when they have as incredible a running game as Clemson does with Trevor Etienne. Yeah. And uh, so I think that will help him but if you do if I did like Bama I would probably be looking at first half first half on Bama I if if I did but yeah. I like Clemson here I just think it's too many points awesome great stuff there cannot wait for that game but let's get into some NFL now and of course we've got wild card weekend and it's the Colts against the Texans in that first game on Saturday so this open Texans minus three but this line is pretty much all over the map where from minus one to minus two now. Colts reeled off nine wins in ten games to grab a playoff spot, Johnny. Six, three, and one ATS over that stretch. Texans, though, not too shabby in their own right. Six, two, and two against the spread in their last ten. Indy won the most recent meeting, 24-21, as four-point underdogs just a few weeks ago. And I mentioned this on the pod, Johnny. Andrew Luck's seventh playoff game. 3-3 three three straight up, 3-3 three and three ATS, 9 TDs, but 12 picks. Does that mm. worry you, Johnny? Not so much because this offensive line is just incredible all season long. It's been one of the best in the NFL. Fewest sacks in the NFL against a big uh, showing of how good this offensive line is. And Andrew Luck, just a smart, efficient QB. So, Great season. Yeah, they'll take what the defense gives you, and Houston would much rather play a running team. Uh, they would, and unfortunately for them that's not what the Colts are they're they're an efficient passing team and we saw that with luck uh, throwing for 399 yards in that meeting where they won by a few points so the other thing I like here Colts defense has just come a long way this season started as a young team a young defense with a new system now they're they've really come into their own really tough there they're 6-0 against the spread in the last six games against winning teams here as well 
Houston's all line's been shaky all year long. Yes. I think you add all those things up. I like the Colts getting points here. Yeah, I love the Colts as well. Second game on Saturday sees the Seattle Seahawks at the Dallas Cowboys. Cowboys minus one and a half, totals 43. This is a primetime game, though, Johnny, and we've been talking about primetime Pete for some time here now. Um, and Russell Wilson as well, 22-5-1 straight up in 28 primetime games with uh, Russell Wilson as the quarterback there in Seattle. Uh, Seahawks, great bet this season, 9-5-2 ATS, 5-2-1 ATS in their last eight, but 1-5-1 ATS in their last seven playoff games. Does that concern you here, or do you like the primetime factor with primetime Pete Carroll? Well, it concerns me a little bit here. I think I think Seahawks won't be bothered by this big stage, and, and we've talked before about how good Pete Carroll is mm-hmm. in primetime situations. The trend that worries me a little more here is that seven of the last eight Seahawks games have gone over the total. And I think that's because of the defense here. They've only held two of their last nine opponents to fewer than 24 points here. And these these totals are going over the number. So that's my big concern here is this defense. My other concern here is, is the Dallas offense for Seattle is the Dallas offense uh, going to rely on the running game a lot. They got all pro uh, right guard Zach Martin back for this one. He should be healthy. Ezekiel Elliott didn't play last game. He should be healthy. He said he expects to get a heavy workload. And if that doesn't work, you can always go to Amari Cooper, who has 551 yards and six touchdowns in his five games with Dallas uh, at home. So these guys are just a different offense with him, and, and I love this Dallas defense. Are you too. surprised at how seamless Amari Cooper has sort of fit into that offense? Because as soon as he got there, it felt like they had something clicking. Yeah, the whole him. thing. It, it was like the one piece they were missing. They just Dak Prescott just could not get comfortable in the passing game, and then all of a sudden he has this great receiver. Now everybody's catching the ball. He feels comfortable distributing distributing it all over. So Amari Comfort Amari Cooper has just provided this comfort yeah. for Dallas for for some reason. I mean he's a great receiver. So yes. and he ca- caught all the balls he should. He's taking some hits. He's doing a lot of things well. He's good yak. So uh, I I think it's a big lift and that's. One of the reasons I, I'm on Dallas here. Let's go to Sunday's games now. And it begins with the uh, LA Chargers at Baltimore. So interesting move here. It opened Ravens minus one. It's now two and a half at some books, three at others. Are you surprised at this shift? I'm I'm surprised at the line a little bit here. And I think with the Ravens at home, that's why they're as favored by as much as they are. They've also covered seven straight playoff games, including five straight playoff games at home. So I think that's a big factor. I don't think it should be this high, though, because I think outweighing that is the fact that we've got the youngest starter to start at QB in a playoff game here in Lamar Jackson, younger than 22 years old. And this is a tough situation for a rookie QB in the NFL. This is is a big deal going to try to win a, a playoff game. Well, let me ask you this. Does this factor into the line as well? Ravens just beat them 22 to 10 in Week 16, snapping a Chargers uh, four-game win streak. That game was at LA as four-point dogs. Does yeah, that factor into I think it? it factors into the game. I'm not reading too much into that because it was kind of a sandwich game. Chargers came off an emotional win at KC, and then they had Denver on the road in the next week. So, tough sandwich game there right. a little bit for them. So, but what I am. What I do like about that for the Chargers is they get to see this this read option rushing offense that that uh, that the Ravens have been running with Lamar Jackson. I think seeing that a second time is going to be of huge benefit for them here. They probably learned a lot from that game. I think it's going to be real, real tough for the Ravens in that situation with a young quarterback coming in here, trying to win a game, being yeah. the youngest QB to start and win a playoff game here. Uh, that's a big deal. I, I just think the Chargers play really tough on defense, and now that they've seen this uh, this offense, they're going to be much better. Three points is too many. Love it. Sunday wraps with the Eagles at the Bears. Uh, we've got Bears minus six after opening five and a half. Looks like Nick Foles will get the ball here. Says he's experiencing some soreness. Philly 3-1-1 one, one ATS in its last five. Bears, though, Johnny, best bet in the NFL. 12 and 4 against the spread went 9 and 1 against the spread in their last 10 games. Unbelievable season for the Bears and their backers, but We've seen this movie before with Nick Foles taking over under center late in the season into the playoffs. Are you a believer in 2019? 
I'm a believer in Nick Foles. I'm very concerned about this injury. Bruised yeah. ribs is is no small thing yeah. for a quarterback. So to overcome that, I'm very scared. If, if I knew Nick Foles was healthy, I would love the Eagles here at plus six. I just think they are getting good at the right time. Foles has this offense averaging 420 yards per game versus yeah. 365 before he started. So crazy. It's, How, why does that happen? Because he's pretty good. And I think they know what they're going to get with him. He's a little more predictable than Carson Wentz. And uh, I, I think that makes the offensive line a little bit more comfortable. Mm. I'm not saying he's better, but yeah. I, he just provides a little more stability. And But it seems like they rally around this They dude. do. They they completely rally around them and, and seem to play their best. The defense has been a little bit better. Uh, and the O-line coming together. Yeah. But I don't know if I can depend on a QB with bruised ribs to play well and finish a game. So that's the real tough thing for me here. And uh, this Bears team, I would assume this D-line is going to get to the QB sometimes. They're yeah. so good. Inevitable. So good. This D- So I'm going to play based on that. And Chicago, number one in, in yards per play against. their number one scoring defense. Put all that together. I like them a little bit here. Awesome. Great stuff. As always, Johnny. Uh, we brought in our boy James Alberino, aka at Spread Investor. Johnny, the Team Odd Shark Super Contest winner for this season. He used an amazing late season run to win this thing via a uh, tiebreaker based on an amazing 5 0 week 17. We talk more football with James. Let's see what he had to say. Today on the show, we welcome James Alberino, a.k.a. at Spread Investor on Twitter. Now, James, you are the Team Odd Shark Super Contest champion. You tied with Joe Ostrowski, but win via a tiebreaker thanks to a perfect 5-0 Week 17. Congrats on a great season. But talk to me a little bit about your season there in the Super Contest. You went 9-1 in the last two weeks, 14-6 in the last four to really make a late season charge. What was key to your success there in the late season of the NFL? Well, the NFL is tricky a lot in October and November. You have a lot of injuries to teams, and you don't have a big sample size on how these teams perform. And, look, there's more than one way to handicap, especially the NFL. But for me personally, with my style, when you have a bigger sample size and the games get a little bit more serious in November and December, you could start to see who's more of a contender and, whose record is a little bit inflated due to some scheduling generosity. And for me, December was just about picking apart the teams who are contenders and, and figuring out whose, whose season's been a little bit more of smoke and mirrors. So let's look ahead to uh, Wild Card Weekend this weekend. Do you have any particular capping strategies for the postseason? For example, do you take anything from the last two uh, weeks of the regular season uh, to get a grip on what you're going to do in the playoffs? Yeah, I, I think you always, in the wild card round, you got to look at rematches from the regular season. And you have a couple here uh, with, with the, Col- the Colts and Texans squaring off. And you look at the Ravens Chargers on Sunday, the Cowboys and Seahawks played each other in September. There's not so many trends to follow for wild card weekend if you see these rematches coming up. So you, for me, I look at what happened in those first matchups and how these teams progressed throughout the season, what they're better at now in December and January than they were in October and November. Uh, and, you know, really coaching edges are key here too. Guys that have had success in the playoffs, and then there's some coaches that can't get out of their own way in the playoffs. So that's definitely key when you factor in that there's so many games that get decided in the last three, four minutes of a, a playoff game. With that in mind, James, are there one or two plays you like in particular in these four games this weekend? Yeah, I like the Colts a lot. It's my best bet of the weekend. I locked them in at plus two on Tuesday, and a couple of reasons with this. The Texans' offensive line has not gotten enough bad news around them, and that's because Deshaun Watson has bailed them out a lot. They've given up over 60 sacks on the season. Indianapolis' defense has gotten much better as the season's progressed. And Indianapolis' strength on defense is they defend the run extremely well. They held the Texans to 54 yards on just 20 carries in the rematch a couple weeks ago. 
So if Lamar Miller and Alfred Blue are limited a bit in this game, and you throw into the fact that Demarius Thomas is hurt and he was a key part of the team in the second half of the season, now it's the, the weight falls a lot on Deshaun Watson and DeAndre Hopkins' shoulders. You're probably going to see the Texans go into a lot more third and long, third and medium than the Colts will. And Andrew Luck, T.Y. Hilton, Eric Ebron, they've had a ton of success against the Texans recently. T.Y. Hilton, in seven career games at Houston, has 933 yards, seven touchdowns. Eric Ebron this year, two touchdowns, 115 yards in two games against the Texans. Andrew Luck last week looked like he could have placed the ball wherever he wanted it. It was like every throw in that game versus the Titans last week was exactly where he wanted it to be placed. So I think you're going to see a close game. These teams know each other extremely well, which might lead to a little bit lower scoring. You'll probably have to sweat it out, but spread the points with the Colts is the best bet. Before we let you go here, James, give us your two cents on the national championship game. At the time of this recording here, Bama minus five and a half after opening minus six and a half. What are your thoughts here? I think it's going to be a close game. And it's a big motivational spot from last year. Obviously, Alabama is motivated. So it's not like, you know, any one team is more motivated than the other. But it's, it's a rematch from a really tough loss that Clemson had last year in the semifinal. And this is a really good defense that Alabama is going to face. They had trouble with Georgia, and they were lucky to come away with that game at the end. I think Clemson could could give Alabama a game, and they're a two-way team. Trevor Lawrence is a really good quarterback, and uh, you already see this line coming down from six. It's five and a half at most places, and now even down to five at a couple of books. That's with 61% of the tickets in Vegas being on Alabama. So the big money is leaning towards Clemson. Should be a really good game, and the points will be valuable. There you have it, at Spread Investor on Twitter. Make sure you guys are following him for some great football capping advice. James, congratulations on winning the Super Contest. Great season. Thanks for joining us. Guys, thanks for having me up. Big thanks to James uh, for joining us here on the show. Uh, Team Odd Shark Super Contest winner. Great insight. At Spread Investor on Twitter if you aren't already following him. If you're looking for some NBA, uh, our very own Jill Gallant has uh, uh, some picks from tonight's NBA board, which has uh, three games uh, in action on the hardwood tonight. Let's see who Jill is on. Thanks, fellas. It's our first NBA Quick Picks video for 2019, and I am ready to make some bank. NBA schedule makers spoiled us for the primetime games tonight, so my first pick is to take the Spurs' money line at home over Kawhi Leonard and the Raptors. The Spurs have quietly been one of the best bets at home lately at 9-1 straight up in ATS in their last 10 games at AT AT&T Center. San Antonio's offense has taken off their ranked third in points per game in December, which has led to a 12-4 ATS record. This is Kawhi Leonard's first game back to San Antonio after being dealt in the offseason, but it's the absence of Kyle Lowry that makes me think the Raptors could be in trouble as they've dropped five of their last six on the road. I think it'll be a hostile environment in San Antonio with Kawhi's return and expect DeMar DeRozan to stick it to his former team. My next pick is to take the under between the Warriors and Rockets. The Warriors are obviously the title favorites, but as a group are shooting their lowest percentage from three-point range since the 2014-15 season. This has led to unders at Oracle Arena with it hitting in five of the last seven games in Oakland with an average combined score of 223 points per game. The Rockets have only scored more than 100 points once in their last five games at Oracle and will be without Eric Gordon and Chris Paul tonight. The under has also hit in five of the Rockets' last seven road games, so I'm banking on another one in Oaktown. For more NBA betting coverage, head over to oddshark.com. Good luck with your NBA and NFL wagers. Back to you, boys. Thanks to Gilles there for his NBA picks. There you go. Uh, Small card uh, on the NBA tonight, but a couple picks there. Kawhi's return to San Antonio, Johnny. Let me put this one out there. Just saw this one on the Odd Shark Twitter. What will be the highest team score on Wild Card Weekend over or under 34 and a half points, Johnny? Well, I'd say over. What's the juice? The juice, Johnny, is minus 135. What? Minus 135, I said. Wow, that is way too high. Who's I, scoring over that? 
I would say the Colts yeah. against sure. a Houston team that would prefer to defend the rush, but minus 135, that's crazy. Crazy like, talk? Yeah, crazy talk. I now love the under. Uh, big show there. A great weekend coming up. Wildcard weekend. We got national championship uh, after that. Are you excited for the NBA or NBA play? Are you excited for the NBA playoffs, Johnny? Yes. What about the NFL playoffs? Because it feels also excited. It feels wide open this year. I think it is. That's why I'm excited about it. Uh, more, uh, more wide open than years past. I think so. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, but that's been a change from what we saw all season. So. Right. Yeah. Should be fun. Um, gun to your head. Who's winning the Super Bowl? The. Saints. The Saints? Yeah. Well, you've been talking Saints for a long time now, yeah. so mm-hmm. got to stick with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, at Johnny Oddshark on Twitter, at Chalk underscore Ninja on Twitter. Whatever you do with your bets, best of luck. Hope you win everything. Uh, and now we will leave you with the Shark Bite of the Day, which of course centers around primetime Pete Carroll, Johnny. Mm.